On December 28, 2013, the acclaimed astronomer Halton Arp passed away at the age of 86 in his home in Munich, Germany. Arp posed a challenge to the very foundations of modern cosmology, a challenge that only grows more relevant with new, astonishing discoveries. We present Wall Thornhill as we honor Arp's remarkable contributions to science and astronomy. I was first introduced to Halton Arp's work by Mel and Amy Aitchison after one of our very first meetings in Portland, Oregon. They could see the relevance of Arp's discoveries to the electric universe that I was then presenting. That was in the mid-90s. In September 2000, I had my first meeting with Halton Arp in Portland, once again at one of the Electric Universe meetings. And it was quite a historic meeting because of the other people who were there, in particular Tony Peratt, uh, who is known for his uh, groundbreaking work in plasma cosmology. And the input from both of these people to the Electric Universe has been considerable. It was only a month later in October that I actually shared the stage in London uh, with Halton Arp. Unfortunately, he was busy at the time involved with a filmmaker making the documentary The Cosmology Quest, which is now available in, on DVD. Halton, known as Chip Arp, was a professional astronomer who, earlier in his career, conducted Edwin Hubble's Nova search in M31. He earned the Helen B. Warner Prize, the Newcomb Cleveland Award and the Alexander von Humboldt Senior Scientist Award. For 28 years he was staff astronomer at the Mount Palomar and Mount Wilson observatories. While there, he produced his well-known catalogue of peculiar galaxies that are disturbed or irregular in appearance. Arp discovered that many pairs of quasars with extremely high redshift values are physically connected to galaxies that have low redshift and are known to be relatively close by. Yet according to the Big Bang expanding universe, the high redshift quasars must be located far behind the nearby galaxy. Because of ARP's observations, the assumption that high redshift objects have to be very far away, on which the Big Bang theory and all of accepted cosmology is based, has to be fundamentally re-examined. While mainstream cosmology has come to embrace the story of the Big Bang and the expanding universe, Cosmologist Carl Sagan noted the challenge that Halton Arp's discoveries pose to the standard theory. In his 1980 bestseller Cosmos, Sagan wrote, There is nevertheless a nagging suspicion among some astronomers that all may not be right with a deduction from the redshift of galaxies via the Doppler effect that the universe is expanding. The astronomer Halton Arp has found enigmatic and disturbing cases where a galaxy and a quasar, or a pair of galaxies that are in apparent physical association, have very different redshifts. However, some believe that institutional science's response to Arp's challenge is a disturbing example of political suppression. Arp's life story exemplifies everything that's wrong with modern showbiz science. His paper, Companion Galaxies on the Ends of Spiral Arms, which offered a fundamental challenge to Big Bang cosmology, had sub-Romanian Chandrasekhar's scrawl across the top corner, this exceeds my imagination. That may have been so, given Chandrasekhar and those like him had a great deal to lose, but it was not a scientific reason for rejection of Arp's observations. However, Arp's telescope time was curtailed and he was forced to continue his research in Germany. Halton Arp has been dubbed a modern Galileo because other scientists refuse to see what is obvious even to amateur astronomers, that low redshift galaxies are often found connected to high redshift companions. Clearly, most of the redshift is intrinsic to the companions. At a single stroke, Arp removed the foundation for Big Bang cosmology. He had, in fact, proven Edwin Hubble, his mentor, correct. For Hubble had written in the Royal Astronomical Society monthly notices in 1937, and I quote, if the redshifts are a Doppler shift, the observations as they stand lead to the anomaly of a closed universe, curiously small and dense, and it may be added, suspiciously young. On the other hand, if redshifts are not Doppler effects, these anomalies disappear and the region observed appears as a small, homogeneous, but insignificant portion of a universe extended indefinitely both in space and time. End of quote. The irony is that the constant defining the hypothetical rate of expansion of the universe bears Hubble's name. 
The winners rewrite history. Up proved Hubble right. We live in a universe extended indefinitely, both in space and time. Halt and Arp believed in the scientific approach more strongly, it seems, than do mainstream scientists. Arp notes that his opponents invariably stated that, and I quote, the observations cannot be accepted because there's no theory to explain them, end of quote. Of course, the companion statement was always, and I quote again, there is no need to modify conventional theories because there are no valid observations which contradict them. Clearly, these two statements have always provided the perfect double bind against progress in the subject. ARP has had dramatic confirmation, which involved also Sir Fred Hoyle, Geoffrey and Margaret Burbage, and Jayant Nalika. And he says, with one object, NGC 3516, we had confirmed one, the alignment of quasars along the minor axis, that is the spin axis of the parent galaxy. Two, the decay of the redshift and increase of luminosity as the quasars travelled outward. Three, their evolution into companion galaxies. And four, and very important, the quantization of the evolving redshift steps. Arp writes, since science is supposed to be characterised by successful prediction, it is significant to note that this most important single observation of quasars being ejected from an active low redshift galaxy was rejected without ever being sent to a referee by that leading journal of trustworthy and important results, Nature magazine. Arp also writes, The most influential people in the field in their jovial camaraderie would simply ridicule anyone who had reported discordant results. How can one fight rumour? I think the only answer is that one must fundamentally change the structure of academic science. Communication must be directly to fellow researchers and the public with no chance of censorship. The cancelling of ARP's telescope time and the suppression of all discovery mode programs is a testimony to the extreme fear that the opposing side has of this kind of research that they would ruthlessly seek out and subdue this small effort. On the other hand, it raises the question of whether the enormous financial, engineering and administrative effort put into astronomical research today is being wasted at the point of application by scientists who believe they already know all of the important answers. In part two of this presentation, we continue our discussion of late pioneer Halton Arp's contributions to science and astronomy. Proponents of plasma cosmology in the electric universe have paid special attention to ARP's theoretical research, including his thesis of intrinsic redshift. ARP's discoveries allow for a new cosmology free from the assumptions of the Big Bang and its bizarre mathematical speculations. ARP's contribution to the electric universe is of fundamental importance because both are based on observation and experiment instead of mathematical speculation. ARP's discovery of the quantized redshift of quasars revealed the nonsense of particle physicists who believe that quantum effects only apply to the subatomic realm. Quasars are ejected from the nucleus of an active galaxy at a good fraction of the speed of light, which implies the matter in the quasar has extremely small initial mass. The quasars then slow down to become a companion galaxy, which implies their mass increases in quantum jumps over time. ARP was very interested in the implications of his discoveries. He related the frequency of the redshifted light from quasars to the youthfulness of newly created matter. He wrote in Seeing Red, The younger the electron making the orbital jump, the less massive it will be, and the weaker, that is more redshifted, will be the emitted photon. Moreover, as the particles age, they become more massive. Therefore, the ensemble becomes more luminous. As its luminosity grows, its redshift drops, evolving into what we consider normal galaxies like our own. Also, as the assemblage ages, its growing mass slows its initial high ejection velocity in order to conserve momentum. The galaxies finish with very slow relative velocities, as observed. This is the kind of theory we are looking for, simple, capable of being visualised, one that can connect together the puzzling observational facts that presently confound understanding. That's the end of that quote. However, this is a radical assault on the beliefs of physicists because it puts a searchlight on the fact that they have no real explanation why matter has mass. It also shows that some of the cherished physical constants are quantized variables. Arp wrote, and I quote, For the first time we have hard observational evidence for the evolution of different forms of organized extragalactic objects. 
the birth and maturing of younger objects into older objects. End of quote. This is a completely different view of the universe from the incoherent Big Bang. It accords perfectly with the work of plasma cosmologists who can explain the beautiful spiral form of galaxies in electrical terms. ARP was aware of plasma cosmology and the electric universe and had come independently to much the same conclusions concerning the Big Bang and the need for a new cosmology. Plasma cosmologists have an electrical galaxy model where current flows along the spiral arms to the centre of the galaxy, where it is stored and intermittently released in jets along the spin axis. The centres of galaxies are simply explained, not as impossible black holes, but as the most concentrated form of stored electromagnetic energy, known in the laboratory as a plasma focus, and used sometimes as a particle gun. So quasars are shot from the heart of their parent galaxy by prodigious electromagnetic forces. Of course, mass and energy are related by the well-known equation E equals mc squared. So the mass of the galactic plasmoid at the centre of the galaxy, which may be less than the size of our tiny solar system and composed of relativistic charged particles, can produce the observed gravitational effects of billions of stars. There are no black holes. The electromagnetic jet that connects the parent galaxy to its baby quasar is the umbilical cord that carries the electrical energy to increase the mass of its embryonic galaxy over time. Should we be surprised that ARP's view of the cosmos has almost biological overtones? In the final paragraphs of Quasar's Redshifts and Controversies, we see the measure of a real scientist, as ARP writes of his thoughts on matter generation in active galactic nuclei and quantized redshift. It is still just a working hypothesis, to be discarded or modified as further observations are made to test it. In fact, its major usefulness is probably only to promote further observations. Yet always the hope is that we have achieved some fuller, deeper understanding of the universe we live in. End of quote. The Electric Universe acknowledges the brilliance and courage of Halton Arp. Like Galileo, his contribution to science will be acknowledged for all time. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.